Welcome to the lectures on the Tabernacle. Uh, let's read Exodus chapter 27, verse 1 and 2. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. An altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns uh, shall be of uh, the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. We read two verses. Finally, we just enter uh, inside of the court of the tabernacle. When you enter uh, through the gate, the very first thing you can see is the altar. So, the, what is the altar? The altar was the place where the sacrifice was shed its blood and died and burned for our sin. Wages of sin is death. So, the altar is the place where we pay the wages of our sin. But you don't die, but you would bring the sacrifice, which is lamb or God, and those animals will die for your sin. So, this uh, altar is the very first thing that you will see when you enter inside of the tabernacle. Same thing in our spiritual life. When you get into the faith, the very first thing you would see is the cross of Jesus. The where Jesus uh, he shed his blood and died for our sin. The cross uh, was the place where our sins was washed eternally. So this altar is also representing of Jesus Christ. Uh, 20 years ago, my pastor uh, went to one prison to have uh, some Bible study. And there, while he preached the gospel, he met uh, some criminal. He robbed people and he murdered some people. So uh, eventually, he was sentenced to death. And he went uh, enter into the prison. And whenever he stayed in the prison, he was scared because he didn't know when he's going to die. So all the time, the prison keeper come to the room and they uh, take somebody. He was thinking, oh, when are they going to take me to death? He doesn't know when he's going to die. That makes him more scared. One day, he read one book, but there was some shocking story. It was about the robber who crucified on the cross next to Jesus. But at the cross, Jesus spoke to one robber. You will stay with me at the paradise today. So this criminal was shocked. Who is Jesus? Now everybody in this world condemned me and despised me. And some, many of them, they scare of me. So nobody want to uh, meet me. They even hate me. Even my parents, they hate me. Well, who is this Jesus uh, telling this robber said, you will be at the paradise with me. And this man wanted to know about Jesus. So he read the whole book, but he wasn't able to understand what this story is talking about. So he read one time and twice and third, but still he couldn't get anything. And one day, uh, Pastor Oksu Park, who is my pastor, came to the prison. And he uh, started to preach the gospel to him through the Bible study. And one day, he realized the blood of Jesus washed all his sins at the cross. All right. That was the reason why Jesus talked to this robber. Do you will be at the paradise. It's not because he never committed any sins, because this guy's sins was washed by the blood of Jesus Christ eternally. And that day, he was praising the Lord. Yes, all my sins are washed at the cross. I will be at the paradise with Jesus. 
And every time pastor um, went to uh, meet him, he was so happy. Uh, one day, two day, and third day, and fourth day, like as, uh, as we keep doing have a Bible study with him, his heart changed the one by one. And start from certain day, uh, we were not able to visit him because uh, he, my pastor was really busy. And one day, uh, he got to know that the brother who was saved in the prison was executed. Uh, so we were really surprised and we went to the prison. But the prison keeper, they spoke to us, Pastor, we never seen anybody die like that. You know, when the criminal uh, uh, die, when they receive execution, they all trembling their body, and they even you know, urinate, and they cannot really walk by themselves. But that man, he walked by himself, and at the uh, in front of the execution, he uh, spoke to everyone. When uh, people ask him, so is there anything that you want to say before you die? He said like this to us. According to the law of Korea, uh, I will die today. So constitution, constitution of the law of Korea cannot forgive my sin. But for according to the law of God, I was washed. When you look at me, you would look at me as a failure. But when I look at you, um, don't think so. You are a failure because you haven't met Jesus yet. I met Jesus and that Jesus washed all my sins with his precious blood and today I will be at heaven. And that day he was praising and singing the hymns and he received persecutions. This brother he committed a lot of sins, and his sin was great. But one thing he found was the altar, the where all his sins was washed. It's not about like how much sin you have. It's about whether you discovered the altar that all your sins were washed. Many years ago, we had a Bible seminar in Russia. And one day, one mafia came to attend our Bible seminar. And he listened to the gospel. And pastor preached, the blood of Jesus washed all our sins. And by his blood, we are washed and we are sanctified and we are justified. And on that day, he listened to the gospel. And at the end of the service, this mafia came to the pastor and asked him, Pastor, I listened to your sermon today. Let me ask you one question. Today you preach, all my sins are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and we became righteous. What about me? I have murdered. And today, I may supposed to kill somebody, but I couldn't because I'm here right now. But maybe tomorrow, I will kill them. What do you think about me? Am I also righteous? And the pastor answered like this, Sir, if I am God, I would judge you that you are sinner because you have murdered, and you are dirty sinners, so you cannot go to heaven. But sir, I am not God. So I am the servant of God, so I have to tell you what the word of God is. Bible says, all your sins are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. On that day, he realized, oh, all my sins are washed. From that day on, he started to share testimony to all his friends. You know what? I am righteous. You know what? I'm righteous. And from that day on, all his friends started to tell him that you are crazy. Hey, I know who you are. I know what you did. I know what kind of person you are. And now you say you're righteous? That I'm God. 
No matter what you say to me, Bible said all oh, my sins are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, according to your eyes, I am a sinner. But according to God's eyes, I am righteous. It is God who justified me. I am righteous. From that day on, he started to preach the gospel and the joy that he earned through the preaching of the gospel was the joy that he never had before. You know what he's doing right now? He is one of the pastors in our mission. Through him, many, pe many people are receiving salvation. What changed this person's life? It wasn't his effort. It wasn't his zeal. It wasn't his determined. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that changed all his life. He discovered the altar the where all his sins was washed. Do you have the altar in your heart? The altar in the Old Testament wasn't able to wash all your sins. But the cross of Jesus 2,000 years ago was more than enough to wash all our sins. Yes, those people's sins were great. But one thing they discovered was the blood of Jesus was much, much greater than all of their sins. They found the altar. Do you have the same altar? Uh, there is the four horns of the altar. If you see the picture, these horns is located at the each corner. Do you know what is the meaning of these horns? If you read 2 Samuel, there is a man named Adonijah. He was a son of David. So he exhausted himself as a king. But God, David chose Solomon to be a next king. And when the Solomon became a king, this Adonijah tried to hide himself. So he ran to the tabernacle and he hold the horn of the altar. Do you know what this means? Not only Adonijah, even Joab, when uh, Absalom uh, like betrayed David and became a king, Joab didn't follow like, Absalom, but Joab followed Adonijah. So uh, Joab also went to the tabernacle and went to the altar and he hold the horn of the altar with his hand. What this means? If you read Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1, you can see the reason. The sin of Judah is written with a pan of iron and with the point of the diamond. It is graven upon the table of their hearts and upon the horns of your altars. So the horns of the altar is the place where your sins are written. So uh, these two people, they were trying to hide their sin with their hand. But your sin is not something can be washed with your works or with your hand. Sin has to be washed by the blood. So if you read uh, Leviticus, when priests do sacrifice for their sin, priests put the blood of lamb on the horns of the altar. And when you put the blood on the horns of the altar, now what can you see? Is it your sin? No. It's the blood. That's the reason why the priest put the blood on the horns of the altar. And do you know, uh, there's an altar in the heaven. And in the heaven, all your sins were engraved in the horns of the altar. But Jesus, he shed all his blood. And if you read Hebrews chapter 9, in, not in this building, but at the more perfect tabernacle, he have obtained eternal redemption for us, not with the blood of God, but with his own blood. 
So Jesus, he has covered all your sins with his precious blood. And with that blood, all our sins were washed. In the Old Testament, when Israel people they did sacrifice at the tabernacle, this, uh, their sin wasn't washed eternally. So every time they had to the sacrifice over and over, so at the altar, the blood was like a river. Because people are keep killing the lamb and the lamb keeps shedding the blood over and over for their sins. But the cross, the where blood of Jesus was shed, it was once. It was more than enough to wash all your sins eternally. The blood of lamb wasn't able to wash all your sins. But blood of Jesus that Jesus shed on the cross was more than enough to wash all our sins eternally and there is no more offering for our sins. And this is the meaning of the altar, which is the Jesus Christ. This altar also shadow of Jesus. When you enter inside of the tabernacle, the very first thing you will see is the altar. And this altar in the, uh, is in the middle of the court of the tabernacle. Where your altar of Jesus is located in your heart. It has to be in the center. And it has to be very first in your spiritual life. The altar in the tabernacle in the Old Testament wasn't able to wash all your sins eternally. But the cross of Jesus 2,000 years ago was able to wash all your sins eternally. Yes, we all do sin. We all have sinned and commit sin. Even today, even tomorrow, it will be not very much different. But do you have the altar in your heart? If you can discover the altar, the where all your sins were washed, then you would boldly say that I am righteous, I am clean. It's because of the blood that shed on the altar. I am perfect because of the blood. That's why Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 said, By one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Yes, you commit sin, and I commit sin. We all commit sins. Then, go to the altar. Then you will discover that all your sins were washed 2,000 years ago. Even before you committed sin, even before you were born, at the cross, the blood of Jesus was more than enough to wash all our sins. Do you have the altar in your heart? If you can discover the altar, then you will be most happy person. So today is the first lecture on the altar. So uh, next time will be the second part of the altar. So through these lectures, I hope you can discover the true heart of God in the uh, tabernacle. So please keep follow of our uh, lectures and have a blessed day. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to watch upcoming sermon, please subscribe.